Alright guys, welcome to another video from XF Motorsports. In this one we have another M156 in the shop, the 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 from AMG. This is, well, it was a really good engine, but it was known for a few really common issues that almost every M156 is expected to have. Um, starting off with the head bolts. Uh, head bolts were, by the way, something that only earlier M156 engines had. They had these head bolts that had a really crappy design. The head of the bolts used to snap off and then the head gasket used to start leaking and then it's a really big job. You have to take off the entire head, replace the head gasket, and put everything back together. And if uh, your head gasket hasn't started leaking, what you can do is you can replace one bolt at a time, replacing them with these newer style of head bolts that don't have the same issue. They have a much stronger head that doesn't snap off and that fixes the whole issue. Uh, the second really common issue is the cam adjusters that I'm also going to be replacing, well fixing on this engine. Uh, the cam adjusters, uh, they also wear out over time and then when you start your car it makes that really loud clunking noise from the front of the engine. It lasts for about um, three, four seconds and then it goes away. Um, it's down to, well, yeah, the cam adjusters themselves. There's a part of the cam adjuster that wears out. Um, I'm gonna talk about that more later in the video and show you guys a few different ways um, how you can fix that issue. So yeah, for this one, let's start off by removing the valve covers, showing you guys the cams, cam adjusters, and then removing the cams to get to the head bolts and hoping everything goes smooth on this one and this car gets running again. So for getting to the head bolts, I had to start off by removing a few things from on top of the engine. Another reason the car actually came in here was because there was a bit of a leak going on underneath the car, seemingly coming from the head gasket. The previous mechanic had told the person that uh, the leak was at the head gasket, but I'm not sure if it was the valve covers or the front cover uh, that was actually dripping oil, making it seem like it was from the head gasket. Uh, but either way, the leak was actually gone after this repair, so that was pretty good. Here's a first look at the cams and everything after the valve covers are removed and you can see that these ones are looking extremely new, not a mark on them. So that's the other problem in these engines that, uh, well, once they reach high mileage you see some wear, start seeing like quite a lot of wear on these cam lobes and then eventually they keep wearing out till a point where they get really low and then they don't even open the valve properly. So the engine starts running rough, it doesn't make proper power and then eventually you need to replace the whole camshaft which is pretty expensive. So. Um, but no problem at all on this one. Uh, this one only has like I think 110,000 kilometers on it or something so uh, yeah the cams are looking pretty new. What's not looking good though is the head bolts because this one definitely does have the older style of head bolts. You can see the head bolts right down there. That's the older style. I'm going to be replacing them with the newer style which I'll also show you in a bit. But um, next yeah to get to removing the head bolts first uh, the cams need to come off and to remove the cams first I need to take this front thing off, I need to bring the engine to 40 degrees, lock the cams in place and then yeah, remove the cam adjusters and uh, cam bolts and all the top caps holding the cam and then they come off and yeah, then <laughs> next we're going to get to removing the head bolts one by one and hoping that none of them are broken and they all come off easily. Okay, so as I was turning the engine to bring the cams in place so that I can put the cam timing tool in place, the cam lock, um, I realized something really funny on this one. It seems like the cam adjuster, this cam adjuster is actually already stuck. It's, uh, it's well not stuck, it's uh, free. Uh, that's the problem that it has, the pin doesn't lock into it and then when you turn the engine the cam flops around and that's the thing that actually makes that noise. But I've never had one where the, the cam adjuster was actually stuck while I was working on it so this is actually pretty funny to see when you turn the engine it gets to a point where you actually see the cam flopping so um, I'll turn the engine and you guys are probably going to be able to see it so that definitely tells me that this cam adjuster is bad so um, it's going to be interesting to have a look inside them now and see how much worse this one turns out than all the rest
Here's a look at the engine after the cams are removed and another thing to have a look at at this point is that uh, these buckets are also another thing that sometimes cause problem on these engines. They uh, get stuck. Well actually what's supposed to happen is in normal operation when the cams are hitting them um, these buckets also rotate like this um, and that's why you see these circular patterns in them that means that they're gonna wear out evenly on all sides. Uh, sometimes what happens is that they get stuck and they don't rotate like that they're only stopped in one position and then the cam repeatedly hits them at that same point and you basically see a line going across like this because the cam is hitting that same exact point every time so um, that's when you know that these ones will start giving you trouble but on this specific engine they're all looking really good um, nothing bad on them so that's really good uh, the hydraulic lifters actually also sit underneath these uh, you have to take these out I don't have a magnet right now but um, yeah the hydraulic lifters sit underneath and if you have a collapsed lift lifter um, that also sometimes makes that clicking noise when your car is running but this one is fine it didn't have any clicking noises so I'm not even going to bother looking into these ones. Um, they should be all good for this engine. But what I need to do next is that I need to start by removing the head bolts one at a time and replacing them with the new ones. Taking out the old rusty head bolts was definitely a bit of a struggle but I took my time with it because the last thing I wanted was to snap a head bolt and then have to remove the entire head to get that head bolt out. Uh, but luckily I was able to get all of them out. A few of them I had to use a pick or a magnet to pull them out uh, just because yeah they were pretty badly stuck in there. But yeah the good thing was I did get all of them out in one piece and after that it was time to put the new ones in one by one. So after replacing all the head bolts on one side of the engine, these are the bolts that came out and well the good news is that all of them did come out in one piece, none of them snapped off because if they did snap off then it would have been a massive hassle taking the rest of the bolt out, which yeah luckily didn't happen in this case. But comparing them to the newer style of head bolts, so yeah the newer style, uh, the biggest difference is the head of the bolt, you can see that it's completely different, this one is a Torx, this one is an E-Torx. Um, and the advantage they say is that when corrosion starts eating the head of the bolt away you can see that the e torques like the uh, the torques the hole in it is getting pretty close to uh, this thing so that when this thing actually gets eaten away because of corrosion it yeah just snaps the entire bolt off um, but whereas in this one even if it gets eaten away because of rust and corrosion it probably wouldn't snap off there would still be something holding it together um, and also this thicker part actually extends further down on this newer style of bolts whereas this one yeah the thicker part only extends down this much and while also showing you guys the condition of these bolts that came out <laughs> the condition definitely does not look too good you can see that corrosion is literally eating these bolts away and yeah give them enough time and these would have definitely snapped off because um, you can yeah, clearly see that um, rust is literally digging into the surface so uh, that's definitely not a good thing to see. So yeah, next I have to get to replacing all the other head bolts from the other side and then after that it's going to be on to the cam adjusters. So after a bit of struggle, now all the head bolts are replaced even on this side and um, yeah, now the engine has all new head bolts which hopefully shouldn't crack over time and cause trouble. But next we have to get to the cam adjusters and I have opened up, uh, well started opening up the cam adjusters over here and this was the one that was on the cam that was already flopping around on the intake driver side and you can see that, uh, well uh, explaining how this cam adjuster is actually supposed to work. Uh, what this is is basically the camshaft bolts onto this part of the cam adjuster and well the sprocket is connected to the outside so what happens is that when the engine wants to turn timing it has that solenoid at the front which it either di diverts oil to this passage or that passage and depending on which passage gets oil pressure obviously is going to push the cam that way and it's going to change timing but what happens is when you're starting your engine of course there is no oil pressure in the engine um, because it hasn't even started yet uh, this pin is actually supposed to block this um, uh, cam adjuster in place so that it's not flopping around but what happens over time is that if you look at that little groove that i'll show you better in a bit that groove keeps wearing out because it's a bit of a crappy design to be honest which is why it wears out and once it wears out then the cam adjuster is not holding its place until it gets oil pressure and you can see that this one is so worn out that the pin doesn't even do anything you can see the spring just lifting up as i turn it so like it's literally become a ramp rather than like a place for the pin to actually grab onto and let me just take this apart and show you guys this thing a little better. 
So this is the plate where the pin is actually supposed to lock on to and um, this is the pin itself. The spring goes over this, it pushes this pin down. But of course over time now you can see that this hole is actually supposed to be like a round circular hole just like all these holes. But you can see that this part of the hole is completely worn away. It's become like a ramp rather than uh, a hole. So that's why now even when the spring tries to hold this pin in place it doesn't really have a chance. The pin just simply slides out of the hole because of all this wear on the side and that's why when you're starting your car there is nothing really holding the cam adjuster in place and it's just flopping around like that and that's what makes that really loud clunking noise when you're starting the car and of course the noise stops later because oil pressure builds up and then the oil pressure actually holds the cam adjuster in place. Uh, so now the solution to fixing this is that well there's a few different solutions starting off with the most expensive one you can go to Mercedes and uh, they sell the entire cam adjuster. They don't sell this plate individually. They would sell you the yeah, entire cam adjuster with the sprocket. And I believe that costs somewhere around $700. The cheaper alternative to that is someone actually reached me out um, earlier. He's also actually from Canada, but the other side of Canada, he's from Vancouver. He actually machines all new plates, just this plate. And that, of course, the new plate is pretty much equivalent to this one. And of course, it wouldn't have the wear. So you just replace this plate. You put his one on and then um, everything is good to go or the other cheaper alternative that I'm going to be doing on this engine is that uh, it's something that Sebastian actually invented and we've been well we did it on his car and it's been running pretty well since then uh, we are just going to weld and fill all this um, worn out part of the cam adjuster then we're going to put it in the CNC machine we're going to flatten it out we're going to mill a new hole in here which is going to be the exact size as uh, what the hole was supposed to be when it came with this cam adjuster and then we're going to put everything back together and it's pretty much going to be like new again so we're going to be doing it for all four of them even though this one is definitely i'm suspecting going to be the worst one since it was already free when i was removing the engine uh, so yeah let's start off with this one and then get to all the others as well Here's a closer look at the plate after all the machining is done and now you can see that the circle is back to normal. It looks like it would pretty much look on a new one and of course now the pin is definitely not going to escape this and it's going to lock in there just like it would in a new one. And I've also taken a few others apart and you can see that yeah these ones are also pretty worn. Well also to answer the question how long this method of uh, fixing it is going to last. Um, and I think it's probably going to last longer than a new one just because well first of all we've tried it on Sebastian's car and uh, he's driven it for quite a while on it. and everything is good with this one but uh, the reason is that Mercedes this metal is actually a really cheap metal that these plates are made out of you actually feel it when you're machining it the end mill actually goes through this metal like it's nothing at all it actually cuts this almost like aluminum but when it gets to the welded part it actually struggles more to cut the welded part so um, it's not even mild steel it's some really soft form of metal which they probably just used to save cost so that it was easier to machine and easier to make these plates and well actually I can even probably show you with just by scratching the metal so like if I scratch it with the pick um, it's, it's actually really easy to scratch uh, you can I'm not sure if you can see it on camera let me just put it this in a vise and show you guys that might be the better way okay so now I've clamped the part in a vise let me see if I can simply scratch it with the pick which um, yeah there you go you can see how easily like the pick can scratch this metal and now I will try the same on the welded part and there you go you can probably already see how much stronger that welded part is it's not it's not the pick is not even leaving a scratch on it whereas look at this part it's just the pick just scratches through it so easily it's like almost like it's made of aluminum or something so yeah you can definitely tell the difference it's a really soft metal um, even the welded metal is much stronger than this one so that's why the welded part is definitely gonna last longer than whatever a factory one of these cam adjusters is gonna last and that's really the reason why they wear out so easily just because the metal is so soft and Mercedes yeah definitely cheaped out on this one so yeah let's get on with all the other ones let's fix these ones and then put everything back together and yeah start putting everything back in the car then
So now finally, after quite a bit of work, the seal is all back together and that means it's time to get in the car, turn the key and hope that we don't hear a massive clunking noise from the engine again. Uh, I'm also going to be looking for leaks, hoping that uh, some of the leaks at least um, stop by with this repair. Uh, the front, these covers were leaking, the valve cover the gaskets were leaking. Uh, there is one leak that I know wouldn't be fixed with this repair. The rear main seal also has a little bit of a leak. So yeah, that's something that <laughs> for sure would still be there even after all this. But yeah, first let's start up the car and see how everything runs. Okay, so far everything definitely seems like it's running normal. No unsuspected noises coming from the engine, no check engine lights, uh, no error codes at all actually in this car. Even before this repair I did check the codes just to make sure that the car was healthy and a 2008 CL with not a single code in any of the modules, that's pretty good for a CL because usually I know CLs, they are full of trouble. So yeah, this car is definitely a really clean one and a really well taken care of one. I've also been looking at all the fluids. ABC fluid was all clean, everything else was pretty good. It's just these few little things on this car that were definitely giving trouble, like the leaks and everything, but uh, let's hope that with this repair, at least some of the leaks go away. Okay, so test driving the CL after the repair, and I'm not gonna drive it too far because, well, two reasons. One, the owner is not here, and secondly, it is already winter in Canada, and they have these people put salt on the road, which ruins nice um, well-kept cars like these which is definitely I don't think this is a winter driven car because it's fairly clean to be one but um, anyways yeah I'm just driving it around to get everything up to temperature so that uh, I can go back in the shop and really see if there's any leaks underneath the car or not but uh, yeah so far everything seems good no lights or errors or anything on the car of course this is a really well kept well taken care of CL um, being in a CL and not finding any faults is actually a pretty rare thing because usually these cars are filled with trouble so um, definitely a really clean example of one and well I might as well use the opportunity to show you guys some cool features of the CL uh, my favorite one is night vision which uh, I think is a completely useless feature but uh, this car was actually the first car to come out with night vision well this and the S class there's a camera located right behind the mirror that actually sees whatever you're looking at and there's infrared lights in the headlights that basically make everything in front of the car brighter for the camera to see. Right now it's pretty bright outside so you can't really tell the difference between night vision and normal vision but if it is completely dark then um, yeah this this screen actually shows you a better view of what you can see outside which is pretty cool I guess but pretty useless at the same time because I'm not sure who's gonna look at this screen and drive at the same time. Uh, other cool features, this Tronic, Lane keep, keep Assist and all those features, this was one of the first models to came out with it, but it was optional. Uh, this car is not the one with this Tronic. Uh, some other cool things about the CL actually that I'm not sure if any other model had. You could actually rotate the screen, uh, I think this is, yeah, this is the button to rotate the screen. Uh, <laughs> which is again, I think a pretty useless thing, but pretty cool at the same time because, um, yeah, what other car came with a navigation screen that you could actually rotate to their side. Um, of course also massaging seats and everything which I'm not gonna play around with because it's not my car but uh, pretty cool nonetheless that this car did have all that. Of course ABC suspension as well uh, which is a hydraulic suspension. The car keeps itself leveled all the time using fancy computers and electronics. If you're going hard on the brakes or if you're going fast through the corners this car will remain completely level despite being like a 5,000 pound car so um, yeah that's pretty cool too but I think now the car is pretty much up to temperature I've been driving it over here for like five minutes I guess so yeah let's take it back to the shop and see if we find any leaks underneath so after driving the CL for a bit here's a look underneath and so far it's looking pretty good I don't uh, see any of that old oil that was leaking from there uh, from the head gasket or seemingly from the head gasket I don't see any new oil over there I did clean up all that area after doing this repair and I don't think any of that old oil is dripping back down at least not so far so um, that's all looking pretty good uh, there's definitely also no drips underneath so far well the only drip underneath is this one uh, this is from the rear main seal that's actually still something that came back in no time at all actually so uh, but even that is not such a bad leak like if you look at the floor there's nothing underneath the car it's just those two little drips over there so uh, yeah, of course, that is still something that's leaking, but I 
think that it's I hope that it's a pretty minor leak at least so but yeah that's uh, probably gonna be uh, a whole different repair if it turns out to be bad enough that it bothers the owner enough to repair it because that's a pretty long job too the transmission has to come out to get to the rear main seal but uh, yeah that's gonna be everything for this repair I'm just gonna put this cover back on and then that's gonna be it for the CL so that is going to be everything for the CL63. Everything is looking really good with this car, but there's also a C63 in the shop that I thought I might show you guys. Um, this one has the same engine and transmission, of course, as the CL63, but uh, this one is not just here for head bolts and cam adjusters. It's actually here for a whole lot more. Uh, we're actually going to be taking the entire engine and transmission out of this car, and we're actually going to be putting it in an old SL. Or, well, not just the engine and transmission, a whole lot of other things from the car, too. Uh, and basically, yeah, a person from UK reached out to me for this project and he wanted to basically take an old SL, uh, convert it into pretty much a modern day uh, AMG. So it looks like an older SL from the outside, but feels and drives just like a new AMG would feel. So yeah, it's a really cool project, a really long project that I'm going to be starting work on pretty soon. and. It's definitely something that you guys are going to be seeing a lot of videos on. It's going to be a little painful, I think, taking this car apart because this is not a salvage C63 or a broken C63. It's a perfectly functional, really clean C63. And yeah, we're going to be taking it apart. And um, I have the SL here already too, but it's not here in the shop right now. There's uh, another project, actually. There's another project bigger than all these projects that I still haven't announced. And uh, I'm not going to announce right now until I really do a proper video for that one because that's something really cool that might even take all of winter and like it's probably going to go into summer even. It's something similar to that car but it's going to be a hell of a lot faster than that car. Something twice as fast as that car actually. So um, I won't mention it for now. I'll leave you guys guessing for now. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think that car is going to be. Uh, but yeah, that's everything for now. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.